Hey guys, in our last Friday video, well, I'm repairing a very interesting retro card. It's the PhysX physics processing unit from Agea. Now, although I've done soldering in the past, well, it seems I've gotten rusty. If you don't use it, you lose it. The reality of retro PC parts is that many of them are failing, especially the capacitors can be troublesome. For example, Pentium 4 or Athlon 64 boards from the capacitor plague era. So I bought some electronics kits, little PCBs, and they come with all the components required. And I also bought a lot of gear. And well, here we are. I'm capturing my soldering attempts and throughout the video I'll share my thoughts and please, if you have suggestions and advice, leave a comment. This is the idea of putting such a video out there. I've always watched repair videos and especially videos from channels such as Necroware or Tony's Tinkering Shop. This also ties in with my channel sponsor PCBWay. This is a recent thing and the world of ordering PCBs, 3D printing, maker type projects, well, I do have a little bit of experience, but just the very basics. And I'm not totally sure where I'm going with all of this. Like I say, uh, well, I don't have a plan, but I believe that sometimes you just need to move forward even if you don't have a clear direction. You will make mistakes, but you'll also grow from it. And who knows where it might lead us with the channel. Now, in the past, I have collaborated with Necroware and the Voltage Blaster. And so things like repairing retro parts, ordering PCBs for little retro projects, and maybe even creating my own projects, who knows. I remember all the way back in high school, we used a software called Eagle. And well, I've forgotten everything about it, but you are never too old to learn something new. And I do have a few ideas for projects that I would love to see become reality. Well, well, here, right at the start, I'm making my first mistake. So I think the tip I used, it's the wrong one. It's a little bit awkward to navigate. And yeah, I managed to leave some nice burn marks onto the PCB. Later in the video, I will change out the tip and the soldering will improve. But yeah, this that's just how it is. You know, you make mistakes and you learn your lessons. This is the third little solder kit that I'm working with. And here I've changed the tip. It's one of those chisel type tips. And also I had some issues with that particular uh, solder joint. So I just approached from a slightly different angle and that seems to be doing the trick. And yeah, you can see it's working a lot better than before. No burn marks and you can see the uh, flux core inside the solder iron working pretty well. And yeah, I've been told to use the largest tip size that you can get away with. It has to do with thermal mass getting as uh, much heat as possible into a small area. Those of you who have been following my channel, you know there is a trend. I like to start with a, yeah, with a low budget operation, have something basic, basic gear and getting some experience under my belt. This is really how the channel started. Uh, those of you who've been around a long, long time, well, my very first videos are captured using S video out, for example. And to this day, I still like to operate that way, you know, start with the basics, gain experience, learn from mistakes, and then slowly improve. I feel that way I'm more confident in picking a more expensive product, like what features do I really want? And I'll also appreciate using it a little bit more than just buying the very best, but not really knowing what I'm doing. The solder iron I'm using, well, it's a very basic model. It does have a temperature setting, but that's about it. The cable is quite short and it doesn't have an off switch. So a better solder iron is definitely on the cards. But having said that, this one, it does the job perfectly fine and you can replace the tips. They are quite cheap. In terms of temperature, I set it to around 350 degrees Celsius. That seems to be working just fine. And yeah, I have my eye out on a few solder irons. There are a couple that use USB power, but I'm also leaning towards one that has a little 
base station as well. So if you have any tips or recommendations, yeah, let me know. The soldering wire I'm using is uh, 6337, which means it's 63% tin and 37% lead. Apparently this is a little bit more modern than the traditional old school 6040 solder. Something to do with transitioning from melted to solid a little bit faster or better or something like that. Um, it does have a flux core, but I'm not sure what type of flux it is. It could be the old school rosin type or it could be one of the more modern flux versions. Um, I've read that rosin is on the way out to do with well, impact on the environment and so on and being replaced with more modern flux types, but I'm not sure which uh, what's inside of this one. Now, yeah, also this is not one of these premium solder wires with multiple flux cores. Maybe it's just got a single one, but yeah, it seems to be working well. It's got a 0.6 millimeter size and apparently the smaller the better. So I have since ordered one with 0.5 that should let me control the amount of solder you feed into the joint a little bit better. Here I'm working on the second soldering kit. This one is a little bit more complex with a bunch of LEDs making a circle. And for some reason, with one of the legs of one of the LEDs, I got into a little bit of trouble. The soldering is hidden by my hands, unfortunately, but here you can see me trying to remove the solder with some wick and then I'm attempting to solder that part again, but it just doesn't really hold. Um, I've learned a little bit from that mistake in the future. If something doesn't work, try a different angle and I seem to be doing the exact same approach. And in the end, yeah, it does stick, but it's quite messy and looks a little bit burnt. So yeah, definitely another area I need to improve on. Amongst the gadgets I bought, one is a PCB holder. This one is really nifty. You can rotate the board, insert the components and then flip it around to do the soldering. And I'm very curious what you guys use, especially I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if there's a, a product or some sort of holder that lets you lock the components into place which means you don't need to bend the wires. That would be awesome. Then I could just populate all the components, lock everything in, do some neat soldering without having to worry that the components fall out. With cutting the wires, well, I do cut them after the soldering, but I've read that you should maybe cut them before the soldering. I read that uh, it could lead to micro damage, uh, but yeah, not quite sure. What is your take on cutting the legs before or after soldering? My eyes also aren't getting any better. Age related, well, the need for reading glasses. And with soldering, well, it's a challenge. So I bought one of these magnifying glasses. You see them everywhere on Amazon and eBay. Very cheap and they come in different styles, but the magnification it's all the same, 1.5x to 3.5x, and it worked beautifully for this type of soldering. The components are not too small. So at this point of time, I don't have a need for a fancy microscope or something like that. But in the future, who knows? I do want to dabble into SMD soldering. Um, so at some point, I will need to get something more fancy, but maybe I can incorporate with a company after having done a few videos. So we will see, especially the ability to record everything I'm doing on, an, on a built-in SD card, that would be quite handy. At the moment, I'm just using an old mobile phone with a holder. Well, it, it does the job, I guess. But yeah, as I say, you know, start with the basics and then try to improve one by one. And here I'm making another mistake. I'm soldering in some headers and I'm not patient enough. The solder hasn't cooled down and set. So when soldering the second leg, unfortunately, it's starting to move. And now the headers, well, have an angle, they're bent. Well, you know, that's another little mistake. Have to be a bit more patient and let the solder cool down and settle. On this component, it's going much better. I'm waiting, letting it cool down. It's now all set in place and then I'm doing 
the second leg. And yeah, that one is perfectly straight. A little bit annoying, these components, because they will fall out once you turn the PCB around. So if you know a tip of what you can do here, yeah, please share down below. I have more solder kits to practice. I believe I bought a pack of 10 or 15 little gadgets with uh, little microphones, LEDs, uh, speakers, and so on. But I also bought a nicer one. It's a little handheld Tetris game. Really cheap. You can buy these on eBay and uh, AliExpress. That one is a bit more complex, but I feel like once the smaller uh, 0 0.5 millimeter solder wire arrives, then I feel confident to giving it a go. And yeah, maybe I'll do a, a dedicated video on that. We will see. But all in all, this has been a lot of fun. I'm enjoying myself. It's a nice little side hobby for the holidays. We all have a little bit more time now. And as I said, I want to level up. I want to learn about uh, Eagle software, uh, creating your own designs. Um, how do you order PCBs? Uh, you need Gerber files, um, ordering the parts and so on. And then, yeah, moving into SMD stuff, 3D printing, repairing retro parts. There is a whole big world out there. And um, I'm excited to uh, yeah, try something new and um, yeah, have more content for you guys as well. Leveling up and uh, some of my uh, retro parts that do need repairing uh, so yeah maybe it was long overdue so yeah let me know what you think about my soldering you can roast me down below <laughs> always eager to hear from you you guys have really good suggestions and ideas and yeah that's it for this one thank you so much for watching and i shall see you soon with another one